and welcome back. Joining me now is Yina Aranas. Hello, Hello Sarah. Hello, how are you doing? Doing really well. And it probably very busy. I would a little Maybe bit, a little bit, yeah, a little bit. So you are, for those who don't know, the CVP of Azure AI Foundry. Microsoft Foundry, actually. Yeah, Microsoft AI yes. Foundry. Um, and <laughs> what is new? Oh my uh, there's god. A, there's a small question for you. What's we new? have a packed release yeah. at Ignite. We have, of course, new models. We, yes. Yesterday we yes. announced uh, the Anthropic models I coming know. from Microsoft Foundry. I know we did. Which is huge because we're now the only provider that has OpenAI, Anthropic, Mistral, Croc, DeepSeek, and so many we, more. We have <coughs> all the things, yes, I think it's we fair have to all. say. And not only that, but we also have so many new capabilities on agents new tools, new ability to connect to knowledge, ability to do workflows, hosted agents, pack new capabilities. And of course, developers are just not building agents. They need to operate them once they release them. So we have new capabilities to do observability, evaluation, and control and security of the entire agentic fleet. Yeah. Well, Essentially, we have all the things. Is there anything? I mean, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> Do is there anything in particular you're really excited about of all of those things that are very exciting? I mean, I think that um, there's a lot of capabilities that I'm really excited about. Yes. Um, for example, we have model router, mm -hmm. which is like oh, a yes. lot of the times customer asks like which model do I do I select, right? Yes. And typically they start with like selecting the most performant model, but not all the time you need the most performant model for the request that you're making. So model router actually analyzes the prompt and then sends the request to the most appropriate model. So that's one that I'm really excited about. Uh, another that I'm excited about is the new capabilities that we have on evaluations and observability. We have an evaluation platform that comes with a lot of evaluators out of the box, but also the ability for you to create, because we, have an, we are an open yeah. platform, to, you, to create your own evaluators based on your scenario. And one of the hardest things is like, how do you like generate the right data for evaluations? We have new synthetic data generation capabilities for doing evaluations as well. And third, <clears throat> let me see, uh, there's so many to pick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I will say um, from the security front, we have a de very deep integration with Microsoft Defender and Microsoft Purview. You're talking my language so, now. You're talking yeah, my language. Well, <laughs> when security operators set up policies, like you can apply them on agents and you can see the alerts. So there's a like deep collaboration between developers and security operators to make mm -hmm. sure that the agents can operate at scale in a safe way. Yeah, they're doing doing as they're, they're supposed to be doing. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. exactly. Yes. I know, so many things. But what do you think has changed at Ignite that maybe is going to move, maybe, maybe some organizations that have I don't know, um, maybe just been doing proof of concepts. Yes. Like what, what's what's changed at this Ignite that's gonna move them into like doing the thing in real life? I will say, um, it's not that I, there is a significant change. It's just like we're moving so fast and there's new capabilities mm -hmm. coming in into the product every single day. And the way that we think about our product is an open platform that is ready for scale and for speed for developers across the enterprise. So like there's, I will say that there's no other platform in the market that like is looking at end to end, how to build agents, how to deploy them and operate them in a way that like you can scale them securely, right? Mm. So that you can connect to the right tools, you can ground to the, with, the, with knowledge, that you can uh, see, or like as I mentioned before, the evaluations, the observability, like uh, be able to like set guardrails, set policies. Mm. Like uh, another thing that we are doing is like connecting each agent with an enter ID. So we're extending the directory in a way that like it's not just users and groups, mm but it yes. also knows about agents. So you can assign permissions, assign mm -hmm. conditional access, um, it manage the life cycle. <coughs> yes, because well, again, when we go into security and we're not going off on a huge security <laughs> tangent, but you need to, yeah, non-human identities, which is what an agent yes. is, can, can are quite susceptible, or have historically been susceptible because people forget about them because yeah. they think, an identity is just a person, and it is not. No, but like it helps you model yes. things like assigning permissions mm -hmm. that the agent can execute on behalf of a user, right? Mm. They can only have access to the right set of data, and that like you know you can manage and audit like all of the set of activities that the agent is doing, and that's very very essential to be able to like build agents and deploy them in their enterprise. It is. Now, obviously, you have your machine here with you. So mm -hmm. I know you've got things to show me. Yes. So I think we've kept people waiting long enough. So okay. let's, let's see it. Let's see the things. Okay. 
So I am here in ai.azure.com, which mm -hmm. is where you want to go to like interact with Microsoft Foundry. Mm -hmm. We have a new redesigned portal, and what you can see is that I very fast I can create an agent, design a workflow, or browse models. And of course, like here's our new models: yeah. uh, Cloud well, Opus 4.1, Sonnet 4.5, Haiku 4.5. So let's see. Like we have the cloud model deployed here. If I ask, like, what is cloud grade four? You know, you're gonna see like what you would expect of all of the different set of models that we have in Foundry. That you can interact and play with them right here in the UI, um, which is great. That like yeah. now we have the capability to have these models in our um, in our product. Now, the second thing I mentioned, model yes. router, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so this is the model. I already have it deployed. It routes across all of these different set of, of models. We're bringing in the Anthropic models to, as well in support yeah. of model router. And uh, here I have a comparison of two queries that I made using model router. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one is a long scroll. But yes. I asked here, what is the capital of Vietnam? And notice right here, that it answered with a GPT-5 mini model, mm. right? And here, that I asked a little bit more of a complicated question, I come here and it answered with an O1 model, right? What, what is it? Um, what is it that? I mean, of course, this is a very, very short query and a very long query. But how is it doing that evaluation apart from the length? Of right. Query? It takes a prompt and it analyzes the prompt mm -hmm. and then like decides does it need to answer it with mm -hmm. a um, a smaller model or a bigger model, depending on the complexity of the prompt, right? Like so, and then as a developer, you can set up like whether you want to optimize for cost or optimize for accuracy or do a balanced uh, approach. That's actually yeah. really cool because I have to say I personally am guilty of just picking the most powerful model I know. for everything. But then when you want to scale that out <laughs> and you want to send your agents to production, yeah. you want to make sure that you optimize for costs mm. and. Yes, I'll say that my agents are not part of an enterprise <laughs> setup <laughs> um, because I think I get a snap smack on the yeah. wrist for the cost. We're actually seeing customers use model router and get mm. significant gains, of mm. course, in cost, but also in performance. So that's good. You know, it's it's really good to, good practice to use in production. And not only that, we also have fine tuning capabilities so that, like, you know, if you want to optimize your model with your own domain data, you can do that as well. Um, let me show you uh, agents. Yes. Oh, so agents connect to tools and connect to knowledge. And we have a catalog of over 1,400 different tools that agents can connect to, whether it is um, different services across the ecosystem and also um, knowledge bases. So here I have an agent that I've connected to some data. Uh, like, actually, no, let me show you this one, which I've okay. connected to Fabric. So Fabric is the place where we have all of our structured data. And if I have um, for me to build an agent in Foundry, to connect to Foundry, is actually mm -hmm. very easy. I just bring in the tools. And I can uh, show you a couple of queries of those agents here. But not only to Fabric, but also to uh, uh, partners in the ecosystem. So for example, here I'm using Elasticsearch MCP mm. server and being able to connect uh, with that as well. Of course, because it is an MCP server, then um, it's going to ask me if I want to execute the request. And then as a developer, I can say, like, yeah, I can approve this request. Go ahead, make that query. Uh, it's going to go all the way to Elasticsearch and come back with that information. But we're not stopping just there. Uh, we're also doing workflows. Let me zoom this a little bit. Um, so workflows is a great way to like think about how do you combine agents so that they can solve business processes, right? Like so, in this particular example, I have multiple agents chained together, and then I have some logic here. Um, it's a, an approval workflow, mm -hmm. and if I send, I have a, an invoice here that I'm going to send, and you're going to see this uh, starting to execute the workflow, starting to go through all of the agents. They're processing the request. In this particular case, I ask my agents to like only focus on structure outputs, and notice that like uh, what I have here is a human on the loop. What it says if the if it needs approval, then ask the question. It came through here, and I'm going to say yes. Go ahead and approve, and it's going to go through. Now, let me show you some other things, um, which is like. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's, there's more. more. Uh, <laughs> the other thing that we are uh, announcing yeah. at Ignite is Foundry IQ. Mm -hmm. So Foundry IQ is, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about in the industry around context engineering, mm -hmm. which is one of the hardest problems. Is how do you bring the right data to make sure that your agent is grounding on like uh, the right context, right? Like so. Foundry IQ um, brings you the ability to connect and create a knowledge base. So in, like, let me show you one of these knowledge bases that can connect across structured data, unstructured data. Okay, that one that didn't work. Let me go to another one. 
uh, connect to structured data, unstructured data, public data. And in this particular case, I have like you know a connection to Azure Blob Storage, but I could uh, add, for example, a connection to SharePoint. So I'm bringing in data from yeah, um, if, my enterprise and data yeah. from the web as well. Yeah, so we could bring in maybe Fabric and OneLake and other exactly. things as well. Yeah. Like look at like yeah. there's all of these different ways to connect data into a Fabric IQ, and then what it does is that when the query comes in, similar to model router that it analyzes the query and then oh, sends it to the right model, yeah. it analyzes the query and then it does query decomposition, sends queries to all of the different set of knowledge uh, sources that it has, then aggregates the responses and then like provides the right context for the model so that the model can answer that's, correctly. That's, mm -hmm. So it's all about kind of putting extra smarts, but to make it more accurate, right? And, yes. And like, well, context, right? Yes, it's context. Yeah, it's, it's context. All about context. It's context. Yeah. Let me show you another thing. So <laughs> as a developer, you want to make sure that you have the right set of metrics when you're building your agents, right? Yes. Like, so for each agent, so like in this particular case, I have a procurement agent. I'm going into the monitor tab, and you can see like the estimated cost, the token usage, the evaluation. Like I can see that I have here some alerts so that I maybe need to look into the evaluations and see what's going on. I have also operational metrics, like the number of runs, the tokens, the tool calls, the errors. And I can come and like, as quickly find out what is wrong with my agent and uh, fix mm -hmm. it, right? And not only that, we are doing that at the single agent level, but we also have an aggregation at the all of the agents that you've built, right? Yes. Like because you are not you know, probably going to build hundreds of agents, yeah. and you're not going to go yeah. through each one of them. No, well, you'd hope, yeah, you, you, like you said, agents should be working together. So right. you need to look at it at a higher level, right? Exactly. So here, for example, I have, we have, call it foundry control plane. And I have an aggregated of all of the different alerts, the number of agents that I have running, the cost that is incurring, the success rate, like whether they have like, you know, what are my top increases, top decreases, every single metric that I want to see across all of the assets that I have. So like, you know, here's a list of assets and it shows me like all of the different feature, like, you know, the cost the estimated, all of these different capabilities. And not only that, I, I mentioned to you that we <laughs> have the Policies, right? Like, so we, we can set up policies. And, love a policy, uh, love a policy. With purview and Defender yeah. and all of those capabilities. Um, That's for yes. security people. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. for security people. But I also have more things to show you. Of, of um, course you do. So this is Foundry. Let me show you how we connect uh, agents to Microsoft 365. Okay. So here I have an agent. It's called Sava Service, and uh, I've built it. I, you can see that I've had a couple of conversations with the agent already. But what I can do is publish to Teams and Microsoft 365. Mm -hmm. uh, after I set up like an aim and all of that, I'm not not, not going to do that right now. But with what is going to happen is it shows up here in the agent store. This is my same agent, Sava Service. Yes. And then I can chat with it right in Microsoft 365 Copilot. Nice. So we're connecting how do you build an agent in Foundry and uh, publish it into Microsoft 365 so that it can fully participate where people spend most of their time. Mm. And not only that, we're also bringing in the connectors, like the MCP connectors, to integrate with Microsoft 365 more natively. natively. So in this particular example, I have a marketing agent. I've asked already what is the top product, and I'm going to ask, um, build me a, a report in Word. And what the agent is going to do is going to call in the MCP mm -hmm. server from Word, and it's going to like create this document, and then post it, um, you know, uh, uh, create it in Microsoft 365. Let's see if it comes back. There you go. Yeah, there, there we Here are. I have my report. You can see it is uh, stored in my SharePoint location, yeah. and this is the document. Yeah. And not only that, I can say post it in Teams for review. Um, and then port. OK, it's a typo, but uh, it's AI. So I, I think I, I give AI is usually pretty good with yeah. my typos, of which there are many. Let's let's see. Let's see. There you go. There I you have go. the post here in Teams. And uh, let, let me see. Let me open it here. I have the post here in Teams. It's 857. Here's the post uh, with the link to the document in Teams. So pretty uh, awesome. Yeah. Right? So many things. So, so many, many things. We I know. have done amazing. Yeah, I can say your teams have been very busy, I think yep. it's fair to say. I mean, 
You know, we could go on forever. I think we could do another 15 minutes, um, but I'm aware the clock is ticking. Yeah. But for those of us who are tuning in at home or people who are here at Ignite, where can they go and learn more for the rest of Ignite? AI.azure.com is the yes. place that you should go. But also, I know that we're going to have some links here. To yes, there's things on the screen. There's things on the screen. And to all of the places where you can have resources to learn more about Microsoft Foundry. Yeah. You know, it has been an absolute pleasure. I would love to talk more, but we are up for time. But yes. thank you for, thank you for taking the time. Me. Yep.